Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how you can modify a button to be used as an input for uh, adapted toys. Uh, so this one um, it requires a firm press but gives a nice loud haptic feedback. Uh, so if you can apply good force, this will be a good option for you. Uh, so to make this, um, you're going to need a buzzer. In this case, we're using the Learning Resources Answer Buzzers, but uh, any old button will work. Um, but I'll show you ex uh, specifically how to use that one. Uh, you'll need some wire. Uh, this is 24 gauge two-stranded wire. Uh, you'll need the, um, the plug that we're going to wire this to and some heat shrink tubing. Uh, you'll probably want a heat gun or a lighter for heat shrink tubing. Uh, to get that apart, we're gonna need a spudger or a uh, flathead screwdriver would probably work. Some nippers. Uh, I really, really like this pair. I'll give you a link. Um, and uh, some good short needle nose pliers would be great too. Uh, a screwdriver to get into this thing. Some wire strippers a multimeter or continuity tester to make sure that everything is working right, and a soldering iron. All right, here we go. First thing we're going to do is take this button apart. So get your spudger or a uh, flathead screwdriver, and we're gonna pry out these little rubber feet. Um, they're held in there with an adhesive, and this gives us access to the screws. Uh, set these aside, make sure not to lose them, and uh, I like to set them sticky side up so that it will remain sticky. Um, I do think there's a chance that these could be considered a choking hazard. Uh, if a kid were to chew on this button and pry them out, then that might not be good. So uh, maybe the right choice for you is gonna be to leave them off. Um, I'm gonna put them back in. So I think they're in there pretty safe. Okay, and then let's take out these four screws. Uh, in here, in this one is the battery compartment. We're actually just gonna leave that alone because when we're done, this thing won't need any batteries. set these screws aside. Again, make sure you don't lose them. Okay, and now we can look on the inside. So the uh, button and its housing come apart. Uh, you'll notice there's a little groove that uh, this button will slot into uh, so that it can't rotate. Um, you'll want to pay attention to that when we're putting it back together. Uh, here's the inside, um, so the switch just comes down and makes contact with this big pad right here. And uh, so what we're going to do is uh, solder a wire in so that it bridges where this switch would uh, close the circuit when it's pressed. Now, because we'll be plugging this into uh, another toy that could have its own power supply, we want to make sure that nothing ever sends power from here to that toy. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut the power lines. Uh, so let's just snip off these black and red wires and get rid of them. That way this thing can never do any harm. Um, there's also a speaker in here uh, that this toy uses that we won't need. And um, you could leave that, but uh, I'm going to cut it and I'm actually going to pry out this speaker and harvest it for future fun times. Uh, who knows, maybe there will be a different project that needs a speaker. So you're coming with me. All 
Okay. Goodbye, speaker. All right, now we have just our board. So uh, this is where you want to use um, you don't need to here because I'll show you, but this is where you would want to use a continuity tester to determine what uh, what wires we're going to be connecting. So we confirm that when these two touch, we get a beep. Great. So uh, I see, I know that the switch connects from this pad right here to this pad up here. So if I touch them, nothing, but then if I depress the switch, Great. So we'll be soldering to this point and this point. Let's see if I can make that really easy for you to see. It's going to be uh, this pad right here and this pad right here. Okay. The next step, you'll want to measure out and cut off five feet of your wire. So uh, here I've got a good long length, and then we're going to strip some of the uh, exterior of the wire off. Revealing the two leads inside. When the wire escapes the housing, uh, you just want to make sure that it's not going to cross the switch area. So I like to orient it maybe this way, maybe this way. Um, the other thing is we're going to want to put some strain relief on it so that if someone were to pull the wire from the outside, it wouldn't try and just rip off the solder joints. So there's actually a post in here that I'm going to loop the wire through, tie it into a knot, and then uh, that's uh, that will provide the strain relief. So take that into account when you are situating your wire. So because of how the knot's going to get tied, I'm actually going to put it mm, kind of like this. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to strip off just a little bit more, oh, and the whole black wire came with me. Well, that answers my next question, is uh, which uh, lead is getting soldered where? Because the black has been stripped all the way back, I'll go ahead and solder it to this pad and then I'll solder the red to this one over here. So I just want to strip off just a little bit of the end of that red. There we go. And we'll use our uh, cutters to go ahead and cut down all the excess from that black lead that we don't need. Twist these up just a little bit. Okay, and so we'll be soldering black there, the red there. Great, let's go ahead and get the iron hot and we'll get that soldered. I've turned this so the angle's a little easier for me to work with. Uh, the iron's hot and the end has been tinned. So I'm gonna go ahead and first try and apply a little dab of solder to this pin, this pad. Great, and now heat I'll set the red wire on the end there where it's going to go. Press down, heat the wire, heat the pad. Until the solder begins to stick. There we go. Let it harden up a little bit. And that's a decent start to this connection. Sorry for jostling you there. Uh, put some extra solder on this. Make sure it's feeling secure. There we go. Oop, came off. Try again. Heat it up. Press it down. Uh, yeah, uh, you can actually go ahead and use the um, the pad that the original positive line was coming in. It's much more convenient. Okay, do the same thing for this other pad. And this time, I'm actually going to tin this wire first. There we go, get some solder on the end there. And now, because there's solder on the pad and solder on the wire, we can just heat them both up together, let go, 
and that connection should be secure. Excellent. Now that the solder joint has been made, uh, it's time to tie the wire onto this post, um, but I find it a little difficult to get to, so I'm actually going to take out the two screws holding this, oops, holding this board in. There's one there, one here. ourselves a knot. Okay, how do you tie a knot? There we go. Now be careful when you're cinching this up that you both uh, leave enough slack on this part of the wire that you're not going to pull uh, these solder joints off but also don't leave so much slack that this wire is going to like hang out and hit the button housing. So we've got it in place. Now I'll cinch it down, keeping the tension that I want. Pretty good. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Okay, time to tighten these screws back on. and secure. Okay, uh, now we're going to reassemble this button, but uh, as we do so, we're going to drill a hole and thread this wire through so that it can exit. So the first thing we need to do is identify how this cover goes back on, and you'll see there's one little tab, and that's going to match, match up with this uh, indent on the side here. Great, so that's gonna go like that. And you can see the wire will naturally want to exit somewhere. Um, mine wants to exit about here. So I'm going to take a drill bit um, that is just about the same diameter as the wire. Uh, in this case, it's one eighth for me. And going to drill the hole, if you can see, uh, just above the lip there. Um, if you go too high, then when you put the green top of the button back on, it won't be able to press all the way. And if you go too low, you'll end up running into the bottom here. So just above the lip should be fine. Okay, I actually went and drilled out this hole uh, over a trash can because it sends little black bits flying everywhere. And then uh, I used my uh, flat cutters to sort of clean it up a little bit. So now it is time to thread this cable through. Uh, yeah, you're going to want to go in from underneath, we'll thread the wire through the housing, all the way down, and then before closing up, we will put the button cap back in place. Remember to find where that aligns, and actually if you just, yeah, if you spin it, you'll feel it where it pops all the way through, then we'll cinch this the rest of the way down. Button top back on. There we go, everything's all lined up. Uh, put the screws back in. Gathered up these screws. Let's put them back in their little holes and tighten them down. Okay. Definitely don't want to over tighten these. This plastic, I'm sure, isn't very robust. Okay, screws it back in. Look at that. Button presses, cords on there tight. 
Okay, uh, if you are going to continue to trust your little black footies around small children, then you stick them back in. Uh, definitely only do this if they're still nice and sticky. Uh, maybe you could put a dab of super glue in there and probably feel better about it. Aha! Great. This side is done. Now it's time to assemble the other end. Uh, so we will be putting on uh, this plug housing and then some heat shrink tubing and then we will be stripping and soldering uh, this wire to this plug and then uh, heating down the heat shrink tubing to cover it and uh, twisting everything together. So definitely slide these on first so that you don't forget to. It is very unfortunate when you uh, finish getting all this soldered up and then have to come back and cut everything off because you forgot the housing. Okay, uh, this is a stereo plug. Um, so it has three sections here and uh, we actually only need a mono connection. In fact, we want this to be mono so that it'll work with whatever female plugs anyone else uh, has attached to a toy. So um, that means one end of what we solder is going to go to this back piece, and then these other two down here we're going to tie together. And the way that I like to do that, um, I'm sure this is ripe for improvement, so uh, if you have any ideas let me know, is I'm actually going to bend these two together so that the holes on the ends of them line up, and then I'll feed the wire straight through it. So I like to do that by grabbing one end uh, about halfway down, bending it back, and then in, and then do the same on the other side. Bend it back and in, and then you can clamp them together, and you play with it for a little bit, and you'll get those holes to line up. I think it was a little aggressive with the first one. Again, this, this process is a little fraught. Okay, that lines up pretty well. I can see through there. So now, it's time to strip this wire. Okay, we will be stripping off uh, some of this wire and then uh, it's going to get clamped down in this area. Uh, one of the leads is gonna head through this small hole in the back and the other lead is going to head through that hole. So we don't need to strip off a lot of this. And importantly, one of them we will be stripping down uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of room between where it clamps and where that hole is uh, as far as length down this wire. So we're going to strip one of these almost all the way back so that as soon as it's clamped it just turns and goes straight down. The other one will leave a lot of its sheathing and just strip it at the end so that uh, it's a little, well we'll see, it's easier to work with. Okay, so let's strip this just about all the way back down. This one, just at the end. Um, because of the type of connection that we're making with these switches, because it's just closing a simple circuit, it doesn't actually matter uh, what our polarity is here. So red, black, um, doesn't matter. It doesn't need to match up with what you did in the button either. Which is kind of nice. Okay, so you'll see that the uh, end that I've stripped further I'm sending into the smaller hole and it's going to get clamped right there in that jacket. Let's actually do that right now. Um, I don't know what tool you're supposed to use for this, uh, so I'm just using my uh, little flat pliers here that are super excellent and I use for everything. Um, they get the job done. If you know the right tool that I'm supposed to use for this, let me know. In fact, if you know a better way to do this entire part, let me know. Okay, we have our uh, black wires heading out the back. So now it's time to get the red wire through these two holes, uh, which I find to be the most challenging part of this. Uh, let's really make sure these holes are lined up nice. Perhaps I should not have crimped the black wire down first. 
Give me a little more flexibility to get this through. And try retwisting the end, try again. I also don't know that it's especially necessary to be feeding this wire through as long as you get it soldered on there well. Okay, oh, you going? Hey, there we go. All right. And tighten up all these little ends here. There, I noticed that uh, one of the strands didn't quite make it through the hole, but I just pulled it around tight, and uh, when we solder it on, that'll be good enough. Okay, great. Uh, time to solder these. Okay, the iron is once again hot, so go ahead and just apply it directly to where the wire meets the housing. Let that get warm, feed some solder into it. Get a nice good blob on there. Pull the wire away, or the iron away, let it cool. Great. Now we'll do again, do the same for the red lead. right where they meet. You know what? Got a little helper hand here I'm gonna use to help keep this all in place. There we go. Okay. Iron at the seam. Good glob of solder. Pull it off. Perfect. Now don't touch the end of this because it uh, has absorbed all that heat. All right, uh, let's snip off all the extra uh, strands. Pretty close, but not all the way to that glob of solder. And then I wanna squish this up a little bit. There we go. Uh, so that the heat shrink tube will slide over it nicely. Okay, let's pull the heat shrink tube up. And get it fed over everything, and we're gonna try and feed it right up over this white collar if we can. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty good. Now time to hit it with the heat gun. Yeah, you could definitely use a lighter for this, but uh, I've got a heat gun, so I'm going to use it. Okay, that's nice and snug on there. Now our very last step. We uh, slide up the back of the housing, and again, make sure this isn't super hot, and twist it together. And there we have it. That is on there, nice and secure. Hooray! And there you have it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope these instructions let you turn some affordable equipment into accessible solutions. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please send them my way. Till next time.